Alright, so today's lesson of 5.2 is about polynomials and some simple operations with polynomials. So this should largely be review from Algebra 1 and Algebra or Geometry topics. So first of all, we are talking about polynomials. So an expression that is not a polynomial, so we need to know what it isn't, would have any of these four things. It would have fractional exponents or square roots of variables. Remember, these two things are really the same because x to the 1 half power, if you remember your exponent rules, is really the square root of x because we have that exponent rule that says the nth root of x to the m power is the same as the x to the um, mn fractional exponent. So fractional exponents, square roots, not allowed in polynomials. These two are basically the same thing also. There are no variables allowed in the denominator in a polynomial. So if you have a numerator that has a negative exponent, obviously that means please move me and that variable will go live in the bottom, or a denominator that has a um, positive exponent, again you have the variable in the denominator and that is not a polynomial. So simple concept of adding and subtracting our polynomials. This is our combining like terms idea that you've been using since you started doing algebra. Often we'll talk about the degree of a polynomial and this is the highest exponent on any term in a polynomial or combined exponents. So for example in these this one is not a polynomial because of that square root. This one is a polynomial but when I go to look at a degree, the degree of this term is 5, the degree of this term is 2 plus 7, so the degree of the polynomial is that combined exponent value which is 9. And it's just another way to talk about our polynomials. So adding and subtracting polynomials is essentially a pretty simple pro um, process. This subtraction is a huge error prone issue and what I would recommend is you change it to add a negative 1 times that quantity. That way you'll get that negative distributed to everything and in fact always changing it to add the opposite is a really great habit for not losing your negatives. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have 2a cubed plus 5a plus negative 7, that doesn't change, plus negative 1 times a cubed is negative a cubed, negative 1 times negative 3a is positive 3a, and negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. Once I've done that distributive with that negative, I can go ahead and combine my like terms. So here is an a cubed thing, here is an a cubed thing, and so I have one a cubed thing left. And then I can, here's my a term, here's my a term. When I combine those, I have 8a, and when I look at my constant terms, of plus negative 9. And that is how you add and subtract those polynomials. Now multiplying is also a fairly simple process. This first example is a single term outside of a quantity. So this is our distributive property no matter how many terms. Again, I'm going to change this to add the opposite. So I have negative y times 4y squared is negative 4y cubed, negative y times positive 2y is negative 2y squared, and negative y times negative 3 is positive 3y. Now remember, when I add and subtract, I get coefficients on my variables, the number in front. When I multiply, I get exponents. So for example, x plus x is 2x, x times x is x squared. So that's kind of your rule of thumb when you're thinking about if I'm going to get an exponent or a coefficient. This next example is also a distributive property. I'm going to change this to plus 
a negative 3x. So I have 2x times 7x squared is 14x cubed. 2x times negative 3x is negative 6x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. And again, those are all review problems for you. When you get down to this next, where you're multiplying two binomials, you have two quantities, that's when we are going to use the FOIL process. First, outer, inner, last. First two terms times each other. Outside terms times each other. Inside terms times each other. And our last terms times each other. What's usually going to happen is that your outside and your inside will combine. And so when you combine like terms and finish up the problem, you will end up adding those outside and inside terms. Again, this is a FOIL problem, two binomials. First two terms, outside terms, don't lose your negative. Inside terms, and your last terms. Careful with your negative. And what happens this time is my inside terms are going to disappear. Oops, this one's x. Sorry. And if you remember from earlier, this is that special factoring multiplication property of the difference of perfect squares, if you're trying to kind of place that with some of your older knowledge. Now, this next problem has a huge error issue. It is not 4x squared minus 81. We do not just say 2x squared minus 9 squared. That is very wrong. We have to think to ourselves, what does a quantity squared mean? And a quantity squared really means that I have two of them being multiplied together. Because remember, exponents is a shorthand notation for multiplication. It's a way of, of abbreviating multiplication. And so now this becomes a FOIL problem. And so first two terms times each other, outside terms times each other, inside terms times each other, last terms times each other, and end up with 4x squared minus 36x, combine those middle terms, plus 81. And you can see that is a very different answer than the common student mistake. Even if I have a trinomial times a binomial, nothing really changes for me. It really becomes kind of a double distributive property. So I'm going to take the first term of the binomial times each of the trinomial pieces, a cubed plus 3a squared minus 4a. And then I'm going to take the second binomial piece times each of the trinomials plus 2a squared plus 6a minus 8. Now I'm going to combine like terms. And when I do this, I'm going to lightly mark on my list so that I know what I've combined. So I have an a cubed. That is my only a cubed item, so that stays the same. I have an a squared and an a squared. So when I combine those, I have 5a squared. And then I'm just going to lightly pencil them off so I don't forget a term. Here's an a thing and an a thing, and when I add those two, I get 2a. There are no other constants, and so that is my answer. One more binomial trinomial multiplication. I'm going to take x times each piece. So I have x cubed minus 3x squared y plus 2xy squared. Take the y times each of the pieces, plus x squared y minus 3xy squared plus 2y cubed. Then I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms. Now it's good math grammar to always write your expressions from the highest variable exponent to the lowest, descending order in degree. And since I have both x's and y's, I can go ahead and pick one 
and do the descending order of that one and focus on one. So I'm going to pick the x cubed. So that one's going to go first. That's my only x cubed. Here's an x squared. Here's an x squared. When I combine those, I have 2 minus 2x squared y. And then I have an x term and an x term. Now it's xy squared, xy squared. Those are identical. That means I can combine them. And when I take 2xy squared minus 3xy squared, that leaves negative xy squared. And I don't have any other y cubed values. And so that is my final answer. That's all that is in the 5-2 lesson. So good luck with your homework.